G'day everyone, it's Angela Ramora here. I'm your favorite Australian and the real estate dingo. And today I'm bringing you a vlog about how to evaluate the different types of asset classes. So let's get this one going. So one thing is definitely for certain guys and that is this, everyone's got an opinion, right? And everyone's got a different perception on when it comes to evaluating asset classes. Now, um, I'm proud to tell you that I'm a blue collar working class guy. Um, so what my perception of a certain asset class is, someone else's perception that was maybe born and bred with a silver spoon in their mouth might be completely different to mine. So I'm not here to tell you that I'm right. I'm not here to tell you that I'm wrong. I'm just happy to share um, uh, my experience, um, my opinion, um, and my perception on the different types of asset classes, right? And how to evaluate them. So we've got three asset classes. We've got A, we've got B, and we've got C. Now, an A-class property and, and what that uh, category uh, uh, should look like, at least in my opinion. So let's just start off with the cap rate. In my opinion, it should be around a 4 to 6% net cap rate. And what, I'm, what I mean by net cap rate is after you um, take out all of your costs, like your property management fees, your insurance, your taxes, a calculation for maintenance and vacancy, whatever the hell you want it to be. I know there's a lot of formulas out there for doing those kinds of discounts too. At the end of the day, you should arrive at around a 4 to 6% net return on investment if you are investing in A-class real estate and you are not getting that return on investment, I would forget about even investing in those areas because you're not even keeping up pace with inflation. And in my, in my opinion, it just doesn't make any sense. Now, what these properties tend to look like, guys, they tend to be located in areas that are much newer, um, you know, pretty much newer built homes, uh, 1,500 plus square foot. Um, I would say that the school districts are absolutely fantastic. They're located within close proximity to all of the amenities needed. And there's some amazing curb appeal in, in, um, in these properties and in the streets. Um, another thing to make note of, they're predominantly owner occupied, right? So the, these areas tend to be in, you know, completely owner occupied. So these properties tend to be in completely owner occupied areas. Um, so that would kind of summarize, you know, the A-class uh, uh, area. The B-class area, in my opinion, would offer a cap rate of around eight to 10%, once again, net, after you take all of your costs into consideration. It would also consist of a mix of 50% investor-owned properties and 50% owner-occupied properties. Um, the areas would also be very well kept. There wouldn't be uh, you know, many distressed homes. Um, the crime would not be high at all either. I would kind of like to refer to these areas as uh, you know, nothing sexy, nothing flashy, very fundamental, blue collar working class people. I mean, here in Ohio, I live in one of these B class areas. Um, they tend to be also within close proximity um, to infrastructure, you know, amenities, good school districts, um, ultimately just a very kind of solid type asset class. Once again, that cap rate would be around eight to 10%. Um, uh, uh, and last but not least would be the C class area guys, which um, would be an area that is predominantly investor owned. There wouldn't be that many owner occupiers. Crime rates would be higher. These homes would be built, you know, there would be 100 year old homes. Um, there wouldn't be any good school district. No amenities would be within close proximity either. Predominantly investor owned, as I mentioned, a lot of tenants. Now, what a C-class area can get you as an ROI <laughs> is beyond me. In my opinion, it's very volatile. They tend to have 12, 15, 18% net cap rates. Honestly, guys, I think those are just paper figures. Um, I really don't see you achieving those uh, returns in real life. It might happen, but every year would be different um, to the other. Um, I also don't see any potential for um, appreciation there. You are pretty much just buying cash flow if you manage to get that desired cash flow. Uh, backtracking a little bit here, a B-class area, um, uh, you might see a little bit of uh, appreciation, uh, but it will predominantly be, you know, once again, a solid kind of cash flow investment a steady income. And then the A-class areas would literally have not much um, cash flow, but potential for appreciation just because there are, they are desirable. Homeowners want to live in these areas. And we all know that homeowners base their decisions on emotion. Um, and when you base your decisions on emotion, you are buying a house, not looking at the numbers, but rather looking at everything else that makes it pretty or a school district or whatever it may be, which t people tend to spend a lot more money when they base their decisions on emotion. So that's kind of a quick summary, guys, in the different types of asset classes in my evaluation and quick perception on those asset classes. I know I've written a ton of blogs on this before, so by all means, please, please feel free to check those other blogs that I've written. Um, and you know what? I would really like to, I would love to get a really 
a detailed um, correspondence going below in the comments section. I want to hear what your perception is on the different types of asset classes, how you evaluate your deals when you're looking to invest in a particular area. Um, so definitely comment below. And just to end by saying, guys, you know, I speak to a lot of investors every single day from all over the world. And one thing that I think that everyone gets very, very wrong, and that is this. They all talk about the stats and demographics and asset classes, vacancy statistics, employment rates, capital growth projections. I mean, you name it. Everyone's an expert when it comes to online research. But there's one thing that they are getting very wrong. It never comes down to the asset class or the stats and demographics, at least in my opinion, it always comes down to the people, right? Teamwork makes the dream work. The team that you are investing with out of state, out of country, or even in your own backyard will either make or break your investment. And I've got a little quote and it goes like this. If you buy the best house in the best, on the best street in the best area with the best capital growth projections, but if your property manager is incompetent or a cheat, you're gonna lose money because they're gonna steal your rent. So it doesn't matter how good that asset class is or how good the properties or the area, ultimately it comes down to the people. And I can tell you right now, I know investors making millions and millions of dollars in rough areas. We're talking about C and D class areas. I haven't even mentioned D class, right? Um, but why they make money, guys, is because they've got people on the ground that understand the product, they understand the market, they probably have to collect rents with bulletproof vests and shotguns, but it doesn't matter. They're trustworthy, they're born and bred in those areas, they collect the rent and they deposit that rent in the investor's account and the investor makes money, right? So focus on the people, guys, please, um, rather than the stats and demographics of the particular area. Um, that's pretty much it. Once again, hey, comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Um, I'm Angela Ramora. I'm your favorite Australian and the real estate dingo, and I'll catch up with you guys in the next vlog. Have a great day.